Welcome to the A.E. Lamb Show. We dedicate this podcast to interviewing musicians of every kind, as well as online content creators on social media. Whether if they're starting out or if they're already on the rise and still growing, this show is all about having a fun conversation with our guests, talking about their favorite things that relate to their passion for their projects. Thank you so much for tuning in, and let's have that conversation. When it comes to songwriting, we all want to take our time to craft the perfect musical piece. Sometimes all it takes is to draft up some ideas, but imagine challenging your songwriting skills to a whole new level. Want a good example? How about writing 100 song ideas in 90 days? You heard right. This challenge has been achieved by a Canadian musician named Danny Black, a singer, songwriter, and performer from Vancouver, BC. In this episode, we'll be talking about her ongoing success on social media, all the unique community events she's done around town, and her love, for certain famous artists we all may know. Okay, everybody, in the studio, we have a really cool, talented uh, musician, songwriter, uh, social media personality. Uh, You can see her uh, doing some really cool, uh, quirky musical shindigs online. And of course, uh, you can see her around town if you live right here in Vancouver, BC, Canada. She has done some really cool, amazing things, such as writing tons of songs in a matter of days, uh, and also, of course, playing at various community events, including food truck festivals, farmer's markets, uh, played at different breweries, you name it. She's done it all already at such a young age, and now we are so honored to have her in the studio to talk about her musical journey, and I figure it'd be cool just to have that really awesome epic conversation just about music um favorite artists and whatnot so without further ado let's give a warm welcome to danny black how's it going danny i'm amazing thank you so much for having me eddie how you doing i'm doing swell thank you so much and of course uh beside her we have one of the most iconic people who's helped danny along her amazing musical journey we got insta mom who of course has helped out with the social media things on instagram and other social media channels how's it going insta mom oh it's going great eddie really happy to be here (laughs) we're happy to have you here as well so danny we got to uh dig deep into your musical journey um when did you get into songwriting um you know i've always kind of been songwriting when i was like i remember my dad He had an iPad one where there was like no camera. It was like the original iPad. Wow. Yeah. Right. Vintage. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) (laughs) And um, I remember sitting down with his iPad one on GarageBand. Yeah. And I'd be like writing songs or like, you know, quote unquote songs at like the ripe age of like six or eight or whenever, whenever it came out, whenever he had it. Yeah. But then I didn't write my first like proper song verse chorus bridge chorus all that jazz until I was 11 Mm. and um, it just sort of never stopped from there that's amazing and did you also uh, get the opportunity to even just like uh, when you write stuff you ever show it to your friends or family members or anybody like that before um, even if it's not finished yet Um, I usually write to completion I'm very like impatient when it comes to songwriting right I'll be like 40 minutes tops like I don't want to be spending days on a piece uh typically you know Mm -hmm. sometimes you know every song's different but yeah in general I won't really show anyone something unless I have the whole thing uh ready yeah yeah I I can chime in on that I remember the first time she had the uh showed uh, her dad and I one of her songs and I remember listening because it was just me she was showing it to I said Danny stop 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 and and I go to get Ian because it was so good I couldn't <laughs> believe at such a young age you know I was expecting it to be just a, a kid song yet it was actually quite quite good thanks <laughs> so instead of uh so you would expect let's say you know like say an average kid to write a song about let's say their favorite animals like a giraffe for example but then she's writing like a deep song about um about life related things Well, I mean, the song she's talking about, I actually, it's funny you bring that up because I just played that song on my live stream today. Oh, nice. Because people were asking me to play my first song and I was like, ooh, this is a song I wrote when I was 11 years old (laughs) and I was mad at my brother. Oh, no. And just to give you some context about this amazing song she's talking about, 
I think I rhymed the word cheese with me in this oh, song. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Very close. But, um, yeah, uh, I guess for an 11 year old, that's pretty complex rhyming. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's really impressive, though, because I, I, I feel like when it comes to songwriting, that's always the hard part, think, thinking what rhymes with this word. Or not only that, does it go well with it? Does it flow well? So you must have been like thinking, okay, hold on. What rhymes with orange? Well, we don't, we don't just know where that rhymes with <laughs> at. Not yet, at least. <laughs> um, so, of course, we all know that you can be seen uh, going around uh, performing at different community events, right? So, of course, you know, there's the uh, the food truck festivals that you've done locally. And that's where I first officially met you in person last year in Richmond at the Lansdowne area. And, and you also have done universities as well, uh, including recently the, the Fraser Valley uh, uh, University out there, uh, U, UFV uh, specifically. And you've also done Victoria uh, in the island, which is fantastic, which is so fascinating that you get to play out of town. Um, so, of course, we, you know, we know that you're so active in that right now. But what about your first live performance? When did you start doing that? Oh, gosh. I th- Oh, well, I, I think it was the Mariner Brewer. That was my or, first or, or uh, the restaurant like, one. Yeah, that was my first paid gig. But yeah. my first actual like singing oh, performance, yeah. I I had really okay. This is weird cuz I grew up having like pretty bad stage fright. Oh, really? When, yeah. I yeah. wouldn't have known that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like only with singing. Like I grew up dancing and whatnot, but yeah. I like could not sing in front of a crowd. Oh. Um, but in my grade what was it? Grade grade 8 talent show? Yeah. I had written this song and I, I really wanted to perform it. Um, and I was just like, you know, this is something I really want to do. I really want to be a singer songwriter. I really want to be an artist. Yeah. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have to go up there and do it. Mm-hmm. And so I think that was the first time I like presented myself as an artist to the that's, world. That's amazing. And uh, yeah, it was, it was bad, but I did it and I got through it and we're you know. glad you did it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We're so glad you did it. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about that talent show. Um, was there any other acts that you saw during that talent show that stood out to you with any of your classmates or friends that have done something so unique? You're like, wow, these guys are pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, it was a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I mean, there was, I know there were like quite a few dancers. Yeah. There was a magic show. Oh. Um, yeah, that was actually really fun. My, actually one of my friends, like one of my best friends growing up, yeah. um, she did the magic show and she yeah. called herself Brayden the Great. And, ah, uh, such a great yeah, stage name, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really funny. It was, I'm pretty sure if I'm remembering correctly, it was all like joke magic tricks. Oh, okay. Where like the person you're doing the trick with would think it's, you know, a trick, but then in reality, the audience is in on the joke. Yeah. Uh, that was fun. I remember that. There were some really great singers, um, but unfortunately, my recollection of it is a bit foggy. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> no, that's really cool. I figure, you know, because talent shows are, are so, it can be so fun too, especially when you see like your other classmates um, showcasing something that you had no idea they could do too. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, like, have has has there anybody has there been anybody that that you've met, uh, whether it be in school or just other friends in, in um, uh, currently? You're like, wow, I didn't know you could do this. Oh, um, not that I can think of. I yeah, not that I can think of. What about you, Gina? Is there anyone? I remember there was that girl that sang that one song, and she hadn't had any training. And and I was remember being so surprised how well she did. I can't remember if that was at the talent show or where that was at. But I have no idea who you're talking about. Oh well. But mystery girl out there, if you know who you are. Yes. <laughs> if you're listening, please uh, reach out to Danny at Insta Mom and uh, let us know how you've been doing. If you're still doing music, uh, we would love to have you on the show one day. But, but oh, an yeah. interesting fun fact about Danny is. Oh no. <laughs> When she talks about being anxious to perform in front of people, the fact that she was able to do that was incredible Mm -hmm. because this was a kid that was actually paralyzed to take tests. And I was always amazed. I go, you can go in front of all these strangers and play music, yet you're paralyzed by fear to take a test. And I always thought that was kind of interesting that she could be out in front of people, which I could never do uh, in the way that she does it and seems so comfortable in front of people. 
um, they say that um, one of the one of the most um, fearful things that people think is scared and death is public speaking or performing in front of people at, at this at you know if if it's your first time doing it right um but i but of course you know like for me seeing how you performed um last year and up to up to up to now uh, i wouldn't have known uh, but i can tell that you have that really great sense of confidence uh when performing live and you know you're you're not afraid you don't you don't care you just you know grab a, grab a couple of songs and you just knock it out of the park Thank you so much. Of course. Now let's dig more deeper into your musical uh, uh, journey here. So, influences. Who were your favorite artists you enjoyed listening to growing growing up? I think you take one look at my Instagram, listen to the music that I write for like two seconds, and you will know immediately that I am obsessed with Taylor Swift. Yeah. <laughs> I curse you, Kamea Addy, for introducing Danny to. <laughs> Taylor Swift at, what were you, 13? Yeah, I think I was like 13 when I started listening to Taylor, like religiously. Yeah. Shout out Kamea, my best friend. <laughs> ah, yes. Yes. And and uh, did you ever watch the Hannah Montana movie when Taylor Swift made an appearance on that one? Yeah. So that came out before my like true obsession. Mm -hmm. I didn't become moronically obsessed. And I mean like <laughs> moronically obsessed. Yeah. Until she released 1989. Mm, yes. And that was when I was like this woman is just a spectacular songwriter she has this knack for writing these catchy melodies and and then of course you know as i got older i was got obsessed with the lore of it all mm -hmm. um and here we are <laughs> i'm still obsessed did, did you see the um the uh the disney plus special uh, of of the full the full version of her concert oh heck yeah Heck yeah! <laughs> so you watch yeah. a full three and a half hours of that. Always, I am um, <laughs> anything actually... Taylor Swift. When a new <laughs> album gets released, a new video get released, we hear about it. I I uh, watched the Eras tour actually before if I have time before a show. Yeah. Um, because I'm an iPad baby, so before a show or before I play a show, yeah. I like to like if I'm eating dinner or whatever breakfast yeah. or lunch or whatever yeah i will watch the eras tour yeah and i'll get so hyped up to do my show i'm like heck yeah let's go and yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh. yeah taylor swift runs my life okay. so, do you have any top five taylor swift songs um i mean of course i'm pretty sure assuming that you must love uh, we are never ever getting back together oh heck yeah that song is like so catchy that like we i mean come on yeah how can you not just you know dance and it's only what it? four chords on the guitar on exactly a... that's the beauty of it c uh, uh c g d e minor that's it there you go yeah <laughs> <laughs> can yeah. you so yes yeah, so what are your top five taylor songs then Ooh, i don't think i can pick a top five. Oh, okay yeah it changes like every single day like every day i, I have a new favorite album yeah it's almost like like the uh, like a different song from Taylor is going to hit your heart somehow. Very and you're like, so. wow, like I have no idea this song's going to be that amazing. Oh yeah. And, and now, now they're no longer just fillers. Now it's just like, whoa, this song is now me mean to me for some weird reason. Absolutely. Yeah. It changes all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, now, what about concerts? What was the first big concert you've ever experienced? I'm very proud of this. This I, I love this question because no one expects my answer. Yeah. But my first concert at eight years old yeah. was Nickelback. Really? Yep. Yep. <laughs> mom, so chat, mom was chat busy that night and it, dad was babysitting. <laughs> or, or not babysitting, but, you know, the parental, uh, it, you know, supposed to be the, per, the responsible parent that night. Yeah, yeah, because because we, we know that uh, Chad songs are not that child friendly at all. <laughs> no, I uh, remember complaining to my dad the whole night. I was like, "Dad, they're swearing too much. Why are they swearing so much?" Um, it was really fun though. I love getting to tell people that my first concert was Nickelback. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, well, is there any ones uh, that you're looking forward to see in, in concert? Like future concerts? Yeah, future concerts. Yeah. Yeah, I um. I have tickets to see Zach Bryan in, I think it's November. Really? Yeah, he mm. is probably one, definitely top five songwriters mm -hmm. right now that I just, his writing is incredible. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, I have tickets to, to Taylor Swift in Vancouver. Which is happening in the near Christmas time, I recall, December, right? December, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I'm excited for that one, too. Do you think she's going to do any Christmas songs? Oh, I um. She might. 
Uh, yeah. She's written, she's written a few Christmas songs. Right. Um, but who knows? Yeah, you never know. Yeah, because I, I think my personal favorite was her version of Last Christmas. <gasps> oh yes, that one, Santa Baby. She does a great rendition of that one. If you like, yeah, country Christmas. Yeah. Um, but she, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So speaking of country music, so obviously you know with you, you're very multi-genre. Um, like I think a lot of us have gone the multi-genre route in recent years, actually, because we know that diversity is really, really important now to get ourselves out there and hit up different kinds of people who want to follow us just because we did this country song or just this hip hop song or this R and B song. Um, so, um, so what is your most favorite genre, uh, uh, right now at this point? Oh my gosh. Um, to play out yeah. and about, I do love a good country song. Um, but I also love with my band and I, um, I love it when we play rock music. Yeah. Because I get to like pretend that I'm really cool. Because uh, I'm not. I don't consider myself a cool person. But then I, if think, I'm... <laughs> I think I think I think the mom and I can agree that you are very cool. <laughs> you're cool, Danny. Oh, thanks, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Even your mom thinks you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> the only opinion that matters. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then if I'm like just listening casually, I mm. first of all I try to be very like diverse in what I listen to. Yeah. Um. But lately, I've been listening to a lot of uh, folk music. Ah. Yeah, yeah. I love me some folk. Oh, and country, any, of course. Of course. You got any favorite folk artists right now at this point? I will forever and always be obsessed with the Lumineers. Ah, <gasps> uh, yes. Yeah, I love yes. the Lumineers. So maybe you can let the audience know there's more to just Hey Ho. Yes. Um, so what <laughs> other songs would you recommend by this band? Um, Angela is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Sleep on the Floor, another classic. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, flowers in your hair. That one is beautiful. Charlie Boy. I'm just gonna list their entire discography. This is a rabbit hole. Nice. She made me but... go see the Lumineers at the Gorge. Oh, really? How how'd you like it? Well, I didn't like getting there because it was uh, an epic failure in terms of how they did the parking that day. So oh, we almost yes. missed part of it because. <gasps> Uh, we were in this great big lineup to get into the to the the venue. Ouch! Uh, but once we were there, what an epic experience! It was truly special. I said to Danny, "We'll go again now that we know what we might be facing. We will we'll plan differently." But absolutely, yeah. an amazing place to watch a show. That's amazing. I mean, is is there anything else you, you guys admire about watching a show at the Gorge? Because I know that's uh, that's on a lot of people's bucket list. Oh, yes. I think it's also the atmosphere of all these people coming together. Yeah. And um, the the setting is so beautiful mm -hmm. and so surreal. Yeah, right. And so I think um, it's something that I would definitely want to do again, uh, especially to see a, a, an artist that, um, you know, in this case it was Danny wanting to see the Lumineers. So right. I think there's certain artists that it would be so worth the drive and mm -hmm. the effort to, to go and see them there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you guys have to bring binoculars at all or were you able to see the stage from a good distance? No, we had we had nice tickets. We had a good a good view and everything and I right mean on. yeah, just right the on. whole atmosphere. It's like to see a folk artist specifically. Yeah. Um at the gorge. It is like dream venue. Noah Khan is playing there in a couple couple of weeks i yeah, think yeah oh my gosh i was so we're unable to attend um but that is one that when i saw he was playing the gorge i was like that is a dream concert <laughs> noah khan at the gorge come oh, on oh. and then and then after the concert danny's sitting in the back of the car you know playing covers of lumineers and <laughs> people listening along it was it was a lot of fun yeah that's, that's awesome. my uh, profile picture on instagram currently was taken at the gorge that is what that is. That explains the, the sunset and all that stuff in the background. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. That's cool. Which artists would you want to see play at the Gorge next if they haven't done so yet? Oh, my god! I'd like to see Noah Kahn or Zach Noah Kahn, yeah. Zach Bryan. Any folk artist, any yeah. ever, really. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. I think, okay, Bleachers. Yeah. They, okay, that was like a very surprisingly yeah. amazing epic yeah. concert. Yeah, yeah. I think seeing them at the Gorge would be really cool too. I think that would be pretty epic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Um, let's dig deep into your love for folk music. Uh, now, has there been any uh, other um, artists uh, within that genre who've influenced you on your songwriting lately? 
If you don't say Joni Mitchell. I was just about to say <laughs> Joni Mitchell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I love, love, love Joni Mitchell. I mean, the Blue album is probably... I mean, I say every album that I love is like top 10 albums. Yeah. Um, but that album, I listen, I could listen to it like every single day. I think mm-hmm. I cried the first time you played Green. Little Green? Little Green, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a beautiful song. I used to have this one CD, but I lost it. I don't know where it went. But I had this one CD where um, she did a concert out in Vancouver at the p e Stadium um, back in the 70s, um, right? Oh my gosh. And so. Um, and at that concert, um, she because uh, was it James Taylor was the opening act for that one too. So, um, but then there was uh, at the near the end of that set, um, her and James did a couple of songs together. Oh my god! And when I was listening to that, I'm just like, wow, these two sound so great together. <laughs> like I don't know too much about James' history. Like the only time I heard about James Taylor was because of The Simpsons because he appeared on one episode. But oh my god. but man, like. Imagine to see her life back in the 70s. And to all you older folks who may have seen her, we envy you, by the way. Very much so. <laughs> Very envious. <laughs> let's, let's also um, fast forward to, um, to what you're doing now, though. Um, because speaking of uh, styles and all that, on social media, you've given yourself a nice challenge where you have 100 songs in 100 different days. Um, now, we all know that you know, you've written, like, say, like the chorus of a song, right? And... Uh, how did you come up with the idea in the first place? So that originated because in like late 2022, I was diagnosed with vocal nodules, oh, didn't know which, that. yeah. So if you don't know what that is for the non singers, it's basically a callus on your vocal folds, mm-hmm. which is a pretty serious injury or it can be. Mm-hmm. And so I was told by a doctor, um, not to sing for a year. Mm-hmm. Um, that was incorrect information. <laughs> it was hmm. definitely not the best course of action. Uh, that didn't happen. Okay. But I got hooked up with an incredible, incredible vocal coach. Shout out, Jamie. Uh, <laughs> still with Jamie. him to this day. We love Jamie. <laughs> Yay, um, Jamie. <laughs> and um, I, because I had stopped singing, mm-hmm. this was in November. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Jamie in January, and I was like, you know. I really want to write songs again and I'm really sad that I can't write songs. And mm-hmm. he kind of looks at me and he goes, what do you mean you can't write songs? I'm yeah. like, well, I can't sing. How can I write songs if I can't sing? And he goes, no, yeah. you can like write songs. Um, and so he greenlit me to start writing songs again. Yeah. And uh, because I hadn't written for months on end, it was like awful. Those few months where I couldn't write music were mm-hmm. just horrible. Right. I it's <laughs> It's bad how dependent I am on songwriting. Yeah. Um, and so I started writing songs and I was writing really quickly to the point where I was writing like multiple songs a day. Yeah. And I, um, go back the next week and I'd written like 10 songs Mm -hmm. and I kind of thought to myself, first of all, it was my vocal coach, Jamie, who pitched it. It was like, what if you wrote a hundred songs, you know, this year or whatever. And I was like, Oh, you know, I'm writing so quickly. Like what if I wrote a hundred songs in 90 days? Like how crazy would that be? Right. And then I kind of was like, by song like 15, I was like, well, you know, what What if I wrote 100 songs in 90 days? Yeah. And so I posted about it on my Instagram and I was like, hey guys, I'm going to write 100 songs in 90 days. And I was like, oh gosh, now I have to write 100 songs in 90 days. <laughs> if you say you're going to do it, you're going you're to own up to it for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I did, I think I finished it in 86 days. That's amazing. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, like, it was fun. It was crazy, but fun. But it's like it's like now here you have like a bunch of these uh different episodes of songs you've written basically. And I think what's really amazing is that you've really pushed yourself to a brand new level. It's like <laughs> you've pretty much, you know, in video game terminology, you've leveled up basically. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. And she'd come in she'd come into our room on a weekend and test drive a bunch of these songs and you know, I wouldn't say all 100 were no. fantastic, but I got to tell you, a lot of them were really good. And it was a lot of fun on a Saturday morning. And she'd come in with her guitar and sit on the end of the bed and just say, what do you think of this one? And then, yeah. you know, go through a few of them. That's amazing. <laughs> Have, are you thinking about maybe going back to the ones you've written since uh, day one and maybe thinking about maybe uh, actually releasing it, completing it fully with like a verse, bridge and all that? Yeah. So that... I wrote a lot of those songs when I was in like a very eclectic kind of folkier songwriting. I don't know. 
era headspace. Right. Um, and then I went to Nashville for a writing trip last July, June, June, July. Nice. June. And we were writing pop songs. Mm-hmm. And that trip fundamentally shifted how I write music. Wow. Yeah, it was, I did not expect it to have that big of an impact. Right. And then I got home and the songs before Nashville that I was writing and the songs after Nashville are like night and day difference. No kidding. Yeah. And so I wrote over 200 songs last year. Nice. Yeah. I got to like November and I was like, I've written like 170 songs. I need to write over 200. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And and when you say like when she writes these songs, they do have the chorus, the bridge. They're complete songs. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. That's I don't great. cheat. I was like, no, full songs, you know, three to eight trillion minutes. Full speed ahead, basically. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to answer your question, if I were to release um, other, you know, songs that I wrote throughout that uh, insane year of writing, they'd probably be from after Nashville. But there are a few songs within the 100 songs in 90 days that I'm yeah. like, you know, that one was actually not not horrible. <laughs> hey, it's not so bad. <laughs> it ain't too bad, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Your experience in Nashville, tell us more about that. Uh, what was the weather like? Uh, did you visit any cool iconic spots um, for live music in Nashville? Oh my gosh, I wish. Um, well, actually, I went outside the Bluebird Cafe. I did not go inside. Oh, okay. Because I was not allowed to. Oh, you're not? It was like a oh, show. Yeah. Well, That's I'm also, right. yeah, I was 19 at the time. I'm 20 now. So I, even if I went now, I still wouldn't be able to go in any of the cool adult only right. venues. But the That's Bluebird, right, yeah. I was like standing outside of and I got a selfie with my dad. Oh, like, that's awesome. Bird. But uh, it was a work trip that whole time. I think mm-hmm. actually loop rabbit hole. Um, we went the week <laughs> of the NHL draft. Oh, yeah. Which as a hockey fan was super cool. Yeah. Because like all year we'd been following Connor Bedard. Yeah. Um, local guy. Shout out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and of course, he was being drafted that year in Nashville. And first right. day of the draft, my right. yeah, yeah. And so the first day of the draft, my dad and I were at a restaurant, like across from the arena where the draft <laughs> was going on. Right, right. And so we're like watching the TVs and watching Bedard get drafted. And we're like, that's like right there. And Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So that's about the most touristy thing we did. We walked along the Broadway kind of strip, yeah, uh, which is like the iconic music row. Um, yeah. But we, it was really primarily focused on on getting this writing and demoing done. Yeah. And um, the songs that I have coming out this year were written in those, we did six songs in three days and the songs that we're cool. releasing were written and recorded in those three days. So Nice. Yeah. It nice. was brilliant though. Nice. Um, would it be okay if we asked you about uh, those recorded songs that you're about to release? Uh, when is it coming out? Uh, any plans for music videos or anything like that? Yeah, so the songs are coming out. One of the songs for sure. We only have one date really of in of when one date set. Holy macaroni! Um, <laughs> all good, all good. My brain just like malfunctioned there. Um, <laughs> I don't blame you. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, we only have one date set, and that one's for I'd say like mid summer. Is that is the date mid summer? Would you clap? Mid summer. Insta mom is nodding. Um, <laughs> She's confirming. <laughs> Uh, So that's when that one's coming out. And we've been working really hard on release plans and content. And um, we got the incredible Luke Beachbound. I feel like I fully botched his name there. He's an incredible photographer. He's done all Mm. the uh, photography for the singles coming out. That's um, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, That's perfect. Yeah. And so, folks, make sure you be on the lookout for that because I'm pretty sure it's going to be fire. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really, I've never been more proud of a piece of, of music that I'm putting out into the world. Yeah. Well, tell us more about the recording process. Like, uh, how did it go? Do you like you know, usually just record your guitar first, or um, do you, or do you have like a band playing with you, or how how is it? Yeah. So because I was in Nashville, I was working originally. What was supposed to happen is I go down, write do a scratch demo, Mm -hmm. six songs in three days. That's right. And then fly back to record the actual song. Mm -hmm. Um, That was what was supposed to happen. Right. And so I get there. uh, The producer was kind of producing the track as the writer and I, Grace and I, wonderful, shout out Grace. She's incredible writer. Um, We were writing the song kind of two track 
as the producer, Matt, was making the music. Yeah. So it was cool because the song was coming to life right in front of our eyes. And then I'd go in and record the the demo vocals, or what yeah. was supposed to be the demo vocals. Yeah, yeah. And then um, as we were picking the songs that we wanted to go through with, you know, Matt, kind of the producer, was saying, oh, you know... I'm actually really happy with these vocals if you want to just use them instead of you coming back. So the the vocals that you hear on these tracks were yeah. recorded on the same day that we wrote the song. No kidding. That's yeah. So, so it was made in Nashville. <laughs> it, the whole thing was made in Nashville, which is mind boggling. Yeah, I remember because I was at work keeping care of Gimli. Our so dog. that, that uh, uh, Danny and her dad could go down to Nashville. And I remember yeah. them sending me the demo after the day's work. And I remember being blown away going, you did that in a day? So <laughs> whatever the process was, right. it was very professionally professionally done in a very short time. Yeah, because we were supposed to fly back the day before Canada Day. And oh. We were, yeah, actually we got in a bit of trouble because um, we were hosting a really big barbecue on Canada Day. Oh, okay. Or like the the day after or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we were supposed to fly out two days before Canada Day. Right. And then we get to the airport. Yeah. My dad and I. Yeah. And they go, oh, we've overbooked this flight. And they were like, oh, we'll give you like a really good compensation if you don't get on this flight. Wow. <laughs> and um, I had to call wow. my boss at the time. I was working at this brewery and I was like, hey. Right. I'm not coming in tomorrow. <laughs> I'm stuck in Nashville. Ouch. Um, and then <laughs> the next day, we were supposed to fly out. Yeah. And there was an issue with our ticket. Yeah. So we flew to Seattle. Yeah. And then we got stuck in Seattle for like eight hours. Yeah. Oh and my um, yeah, it was really bad. But Instamom was a trooper. She <laughs> didn't hang it over our heads for too long. And we got an extra night in Nashville. <laughs> right on. Oh my goodness! <laughs> and we just moved the barbecue to the next day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our whole plans just. Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, speak of barbecue. Uh, uh, let's let's talk about it. Um, a in a different subject matter here. Uh, favorite food. Um, let's say if you were to, um, play um uh, the concert of your lifetime, right? And you get backstage, uh, green room, all that stuff. Um, what would be your uh food of choice uh, to eat before you go on stage? Oh, before I go on stage? Or after, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my gosh. I try not to eat right before I go on stage. It's like weird finding like a good balance of like how much to eat before a performance. Of course, yeah. Especially if I'm playing like three, four hours. Right. Because um, then I have to, you know, time it and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, But like lately, I have been like ungodly obsessed with watermelon ah <laughs> i you can ask insta mom i mean you, it, i mean it's, like, it's good for you though theoretically right? i have i could eat watermelon like three meals a day <laughs> <laughs> well what'll happen you'll go on these binges where yeah. you know and then so i'll buy a big watermelon and all of a sudden we're no longer into watermelon and then it goes to waste so i'm always okay that's very true. But one thing I will never tire of, yeah, and you can attest to this, is sushi. I love yes. sushi. Yes, I can agree with you on that one. It's like the goaded food. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about other uh, backstage riders? So let's say you know you have the choice. Let's say money's not an issue, right? They can provide you other things. So let's say, what other things do you want? Do you want Herbs. like <laughs> yerbs? Yes, yeah. yerba mate. Yeah, guyaki yerba mate. <laughs> or how about let's say you know you get, you get like. Um, uh, like like a PlayStation uh, with, for your bandmates before you go on stage, or a pool table, anything like that. Oh my gosh! I Knowing have... you, you'd probably pick a record player and yeah, I'd pick Taylor Swift albums. <laughs> <laughs> I pick Taylor Swift merch. Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. Um. Yeah, I don't know about like a PlayStation or anything. I'm sure my bandmates would love that. Uh, yeah. Myself, I'm not a big gamer. Oh okay. Yeah. Um. But probably a TV and watch like, uh, like Friends. The Office or Friends, yeah, or a hockey game, <laughs> or a hockey game, yes, Canucks. <laughs> yeah, of course, nice, that's awesome. Let's go back to talking about your live show experiences. So you've, like I said, uh, you've played different community events around town, um, and you've done universities already. Um, which one has been your favorite so far? Oh my goodness, 
I mean, it's really hard to compare yeah. because like I've done shows like the universities, which are always a wonderful, wonderful experience. Yeah. Um, and then just last week I played a show at an event for an event called we should be friends, mm. uh, which was really special in its own right. You know, they yeah. put, it's basically like this group, I guess this organization yeah. that is centered around making friends in yeah. Vancouver. That's right. Yeah. And it was just, it was such a cool thing to be a part of. And, um, actually one, I think, <laughs> sorry, I'm like going on so many rabbit holes here, no, but, <laughs> Um, I think my most special ones is first of all, I sang the national anthem at a Canucks game, which That's right, yes, during, that was during COVID. No fans, just an Instagram. No, still, but I remember that. it yeah. was so cool. It was so <laughs> cool. It was wild. Yeah, it was. That was pretty cool. Uh, did we win that game? I can't remember. No, we didn't. No, that was unfortunate. But you think this empty arena. A puck did come flying up. Yeah, because I took the net hit- down. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and the whole time we're watching and we're like, "Hey, what if they shoot the puck and hit us?" <laughs> and it hit the box next to us, and and there were the uh, fire or the uh, <laughs> yeah, and then it's in the next uh, box, and they got the puck. They- <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, so that one was really cool. And then that in 2020, I did a fundraiser mm-hmm. um, for the food banks. That was a really special show. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that one was really cool. And then. I was asked to by a, a high school, Glen Eagle, to play for the Michael Cochoni Foundation. They were doing a gala. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, so it was a fundraiser for um, raising funds for childhood cancer research. And, that's amazing. Um, that was a really special show. And then, of course, whenever I've had the opportunity to play like a ticketed show yeah. where people like actually want to see me, yeah. you know, that's always like extremely special. It's like, wow, like... You're not coming because most of the time people come and you just happen to be playing music. Yeah. But it's a really special um, and honoring feeling when you know that people have shown showed up just to see you. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Like an actual showcase. Like an actual show. Yeah. 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 It's so like, it's wow. not, yeah. So because because I know you you and I we have that common uh, thing that, that we've done where we're you know we we play but we're playing as background music. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. But you know, of course, of course it's still it's very necessary and it's important to have, right? It creates a nice atmosphere, right? But mm-hmm. but yeah, I I hear what you're saying though, like but to have like an actual showcase where everyone's coming in and they're paying attention to your songwriting or whatever it is yeah. that you're doing. It's like, wow, you know, I'm here to see the Danny Black in person. <laughs> that, I yeah. think Schmidt House has to Schmidt be really the cool. first time you ever did that was amazing. Because it was yeah. the first time where it was kind of a ticketed event. It was in somebody's home, and um, they during COVID uh, they weren't able to do what they normally do, which is part of a circuit where um, the artists go from home to home. They get all right. the revenue, right? And it's a great way to promote music and also for them to make some money. Wow! And so you know, th- this couple who ran this. We're at, listening to her play at uh, Fraser Mills where she had a regular gig. Nice. And they said, you know, we'd like to promote some of the, the local artists and we think Danny would be great. Amazing. And <laughs> so it was the first time she played and it was all, you know, primarily her originals. Yeah. And uh, uh, halfway through Danny, uh, you know, at the halftime, Danny had baked cookies for everybody. <laughs> when nice. Was, it came yeah. <laughs> but it was such a great energy. Yeah. It was really special. Yeah. And just getting to like, showcase my songwriting yeah because like that's like my not my favorite part but one of my favorite parts of being a musician is writing stories and getting to share them with people who actually want to listen even if i had to bribe them with cookies i mean yeah you know they sold out that show in like 48 hours which was crazy to me and you sell out the cookies too right oh yeah oh yeah (laughs) they went they went they went so fast that's oh yeah no i make i make some really good chocolate chip cookies i've been asked for that recipe several times that's awesome um so if you don't mind telling us uh what is uh, your recipe to making good cookies it okay so the okay i say my cookie is the recipes on tasty.com i did not invent this okay gotcha just so you guys know (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. i'm not plagiarizing here i know i know i don't want you to get sued (laughs) (laughs) tasty.com please don't sue me yeah um but the secret the secret sauce to these specific chocolate chip cookies yeah. um, is 50% dark chocolate chunks mm, yes. and 50% milk or like semi-sweet chocolate chips. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the secret. You got to have like the 50-50. Right. 
Um, and then they're like, you know, there's, you get the nice richness, but then they're not too sweet. And then, oh, that's good. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. Yeah. Shout out tasty.com. That's amazing. Cause I always find that when you go buy store bought cookies, man, there's just way too much sugar in it. You know, it's just mm. too sweet. And, you know, I'm just like, no, this is just too intense. Right. But, you know, with homemade stuff, like what you, what you did, I mean, people like people don't realize that, that if you actually taste the homemade versus store bought cookies, man, you're going to, you're, you're going to know the difference Oh yeah. once you experience it. So oh, if yeah. you have, if you guys haven't done homemade cookies yet, have eaten them yet, you, you should try it. You will not, uh, look back. Yeah. You're missing out if you haven't had homemade, uh, cookies. <laughs> uh, I think I think we should do you should do a thing where every show that you do you should provide some nice homemade cookies or at least you know have have a crew from from either your family or your friends to you know do the same recipe and share it with everybody. <laughs> right, that's what I was thinking. Well, she did have a second show. She did uh, Schmidt House a second time. Yeah, where she profiled her uh, hundred songs in ninety days. Oh yeah, awesome. and uh, you did do your cookies again I did then. My cookies again, yeah, and they, they <laughs> and there was a hit, and the people who came back again because again it sold out like in it sold out. That one sold out in less than two hours. Yeah, which I still which can't you believe. Felt, you That's... felt like a rock star, didn't you? In that, I very much did. Because yeah. <laughs> like, that's how Taylor Swift feels. <laughs> <laughs> can Taylor Swift bake cookies? I oh, bet you she yeah. can. Yeah, no, she's like known for it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. she even she even did that that little bit. Remember when she um uh did that one comedic uh rap video with uh with T was it T Pain? Oh, remember? yes, years ago. It was like 2010, right? Was yeah. it that one? Yeah, yeah. Or she called one. it Thug Story? Something like that. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then she's, she mentioned about her and her mom baking cookies together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was actually like hilarious. And that was like the comedic side we saw of her. We're just like, wow, she actually is pretty hilarious. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah, she's, she can be really funny. Yeah. Uh, I like her SNL skits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, so we talk about um, the live shows that you've done, including the one recently for the, the We Should Be Friends uh, uh, crew, uh, the one that they hosted. Would that be something you would do again in a heartbeat? Yeah. Yeah. Anything like that. Uh, it was a similar vibe to like We Should or we should Be Friends, <laughs> um, to Secret Sessions, Yeah, which I had done, was that October, September? Oh, that's amazing. And that was another really special show yeah. where it's just this like intimate community nice. of people who want to listen to music, who nice. want to connect. Nice. And uh, the people who run both of those events are just extraordinary people. And I just feel really grateful yeah. uh, that I was able to work with them. And yeah, super they, supportive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Amazing. No, they're wonderful. Okay. Uh, what was the audience response like uh, when they uh, when they hear your stuff? Like, uh, what what was some feedback that they've given you? Like, did they say they've enjoyed it, uh, or like, what, what did they what did they say? Yeah, um, you know, I've had really positive experiences. Um, you know, people have been really kind and and gracious uh, mm -hmm. with my songwriting, um, which you know is such a an honor you know when people are able to like relate to and, and connect with your lyrics that's you know that's the dream right there right yeah. so um yeah. yeah yeah you tell eddie about our experience in hawaii oh, oh yeah hawaii. that wasn't that wasn't my songwriting though it wasn't your songwriting <laughs> but how music can bring people together and how it can create just an energy yeah right I've, We've had a lot of random side quests this with this whole music thing. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. This is, yeah. <laughs> um, so what my mom is talking about is uh, we were on a family vacation. Family vacation. It was my parents and I. I have brothers too. Yeah. Um, but they were not with us. Mm, um, okay. They're a little yeah. choked about that still. We won't talk yeah, about they're, that. Yeah, they're a little salty about it, but <laughs> oh, it's okay. okay. All right. I was working away, all right? Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was, I had brought my guitar yeah. My bad guitar, because I didn't want to bring my good guitar to Hawaii, you know? You want to risk it, right? Yeah, Yeah, right, you know? Yeah. And um, my cousin Rachel, uh, my my Scottish cousin, my Scottish sister, shout out. Yeah. <laughs> um, she was with us, and she was asking me to play on the balcony. Mm -hmm. And it was like 8 or 9 p.m. And yeah. the live band, they had a live band at the pool, and our balcony overlooked oh, the nice. pool. Oh, nice. Awesome. Yeah, it was <laughs> super cool. It was great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was sitting on the balcony playing Big Yellow Taxi by Joni Mitchell. Yeah. And we hear this voice like coming up and he goes, who's that singing? Ah. And my dad, we're kind of like looking around. It's like, oh, oh we're in trouble. <laughs> we oh my gosh. Noise, <laughs> noise complaint. Noise complaint. Got a noise complaint. And my dad kind of looks over because he's, you know, wary. And he's like, oh, that's, 
that's my daughter. No, he says, who's asking? <laughs> yeah, he goes, who's asking? <laughs> um, and turns out it was the local musician. Okay. Wilmont. Uh, his, that's his name. And he, after kind of exchanging, I don't know, pleasantries with him, yeah. he had invited me to sing with him and his band. A, wow. few we- a few days later and at this point this was my first experience ever playing with a band no kidding it was unbelievable okay. these were like world-renowned musicians yeah um it's just so so talented yeah and um it went well uh he was really kind um and he had invited me to play with his band like the following week and it was funny because i'd amazing. like gone on <laughs> to go on vacation yeah. to Hawaii and I ended up singing two shows <laughs> and, and his son did shows. a video for you on the beautiful ocean background yeah. that's right, for really one of amazing original yeah. songs yeah. at that time yeah. did, did you remember what songs uh you guys did together uh we definitely did Valerie Jolene we did Mean by Taylor Swift awesome um and then his son Sam filmed a video of me singing one of my original songs wow um, and so if you go to my YouTube channel there's a video called Sail Away live from Hawaii or yeah. something Something like that, like yeah. from from Maui or something, oh, that's and a, that was that's filmed amazing. by this really gracious musician's son. Wow! And, and unfortunately, when they had the fires in Lahaina, mm-hmm. uh, they were devastated with yeah. the, with oh, the fires. No. But um, they were really it's kind just just a uh, yeah. They were very good. You know, very we good checked people. in with them, and um, our hearts go out to them. And, and of the course, family. yeah, yeah. And, but I'm so glad you get you you, you got the chance to experience th- that moment. It and, was so cool. Yeah, and I'm, I'm so happy that you got a chance to uh, have that opportunity. And just the fact that you were able to hang and jam with uh, uh, these amazing locals who are so pro at what they do instrumentally. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really a special uh, trip. And, you know, that was definitely a highlight. Mm-hmm. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. And... I, I know that uh, with you, uh, you know, like like going back to your uh, songs you're going to release, right? You're very excited about it. Is there any plans for a live uh, album release show? Ah, so this one was interesting because we were going to do an album release show. Yeah. Um, but I there's plans for a pretty big show like two weeks after the song comes out. Okay, right on. Yeah, and so it was like a conflict. So I couldn't, yeah. I wasn't able to do both shows. And so of course. I ended up having to go with the bigger show, which I'm so, so excited to um, to get to do. Some more information coming you eventually. That one yet. I'm not, I don't T- think I'm allowed to Yeah, T- it TBA, yet. guys, TBA. So. <laughs> um, Wait. Follow <laughs> my Instagram or my newsletter if you want to know exactly that. But um yeah, so for an album release show, it was going to happen, mm-hmm. and then we put a lot of thought into it, and unfortunately, that won't happen. But my band and I will be playing a full live original set um, this summer. Stay tuned for more details. Of course. Yes, yeah. That's amazing. So, Instamon, going back to you, too, I mean, obviously, you've played such a big role uh, in Danny's uh, musical journey. Um, uh, you, I mean, you got to let us know, um, like... Like you must enjoy um, seeing the growth that Danny has gone through over the years as a songwriter and a performer. It's something I, you know, obviously it's a career path um, that's not traditional in the sense of you go to, you know, university, you know what the job is. It's changed so much in terms of how you get traction. But when I watch her, it's like breathing air for her Mm -hmm. and for her not to do it would yeah. be the injustice and so watching her and seeing just how she's growing and how hard she works at it yeah um it it, it brings me joy and being with her at these different shows the people we meet the community we meet um i tell her it's uh it's a gift and to you know a, a big part of it is the journey and the people that you meet along the way and hopefully a nice collection of people all the way through that you can share in each other's successes and, yeah. and challenges and yeah and at the end of the day it makes you look back and smile yeah, that's amazing and speaking of meeting people uh let's talk about it so you and i we have this one thing in common too as musicians locally here in vancouver we go to open mic nights around town mm-hmm. uh, what are your general thoughts about doing open mics um you know there's a lot of like stigma around open mics and i think that's 
redonkulous. Um, Agreed. Yeah, they're a great way to meet people. There's such talent. And, you know, it is it can be really hard to find those spaces that will let just anyone play in. Um, We need more spaces like that where, you know, it is in Vancouver specifically, the community is so unbelievably supportive yeah. and um, I've connected with some really incredible people just solely through the open mics and so big fan big fan of open mics uh, that's awesome and that's the thing too because we all know that it can be very tough locally here in Vancouver because mm-hmm. we know that venues have shut down left and right over the years right yeah. and that makes things so difficult for us uh, musicians to want to get ourselves out there you know but um, I, I really just I really like I agree with you though I really like the fact that it is uh, like the people we're hanging out with um, within the last couple of years, you know, they've been such a really uh, cool part of the community. And I feel like, you know, we've, we've really grown to love these people, not just as songwriters, but uh, as people as well, because they're just very mm. solid people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, your one of your first experiences was an open mic, and I can't remember how old you were, but it was the oh Cat and gosh. Fiddle. I was fifteen. Oh, the one at Coquitlam. Yeah. Yeah. Or P- Porco Coquitlam, rather. Yeah. P- Poco. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't allowed in. Like I was literally, it was a very small section that I was actually allowed in. Yeah. Because I was fifteen. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the first time that I had played, like a, you know, space like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then I played my first gig a couple months later. And I remember, because she was supposed to have like three hours of music. Oh. And I remember turning to my husband going, how is she going to get three hours of music, right? She doesn't have like. Not at the open mic. She's talking about like gig. At a gig. At a gig. Oh, yeah, not yeah, at the yeah, open yeah, mic. Yeah. No, she got a gig, you know, like I think was a, a year later. No, not a year. I was 15 still. Wow. Yeah. yeah, and so I'm going like, oh, and we're of course we're gonna go and support, you know, like I support my, my boys playing soccer or hockey. I'm gonna go support her at her thing, and I'm yeah. really not expecting much. And <laughs> son of a gun, if she didn't come up with three hours worth of music, and you the know, pressure was, was on, and you're like, good. all right, we're gonna make this happen. And again, remember I told her, you kiddo who has test anxiety, and yet she's gonna go do this in in front of a bunch of strangers. Yeah, I have this like <laughs> toxic belief that I can do whatever I want to. Right. Um, and so, musically, like, any no, didn't just we, in general. We all? <laughs> in general, that I was like, "Oh, can you play like four hours worth of music?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." And, <laughs> and I just like agree to these things, and then I'll kind of like sit and think about it, and I'm like, "Oh, oh no!" And like, I was supposed to play a show in uh, April with my band for the first time. Oh, okay, yeah. That didn't happen because the weather decided to give a huge windstorm. Um, but we ha- we were there. We were oh crazy day. Anyways, I had booked that gig in like January. Right. And um, I was talking to the event coordinator. Yeah. And he was like, like oh like, I've worked with these people before, wonderful people. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, we're looking for you know artists to book on the main stage and on the busker's tent. And I was like, yeah, do you want me and my band or just me? And they're like, you have a band? And I was like, yeah, I have a band. I did not have a band at the time. <laughs> and um, so I I booked the gig. Yeah. And I was like, great, now I have to get a band. And thankfully, you know, I connected with my guitarist who connected with me with my drummer. That's awesome. And then I found my, my bassist at the time. And, and they were amazing people. Yeah, so and they worked so them. hard. And they're so talented. That's and we amazing. were so ready. And then a windstorm happened. Drum kit went flying off the back of yeah. the ship. Oh yeah. The monitor flew down. <laughs> oh were flying. Yeah, but yeah. but we have a lot of shows booked for the summer, and we will get redemption, and we will actually play a gig, and um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, I know the the crazy things that happen to to West bands, especially when we try to do outdoor shows. Oh my gosh, yeah, it was crazy. It was sunny all day, and then twenty minutes before we were supposed to go on the wind picked up and it was raining and it got cold and it just became november all of a sudden oh yeah like (laughs) like the it was kind of funny because the dj kept playing his music oh my goodness but there were like eight people holding his tent down (laughs) oh no (laughs) and like children were crying all the artists and booths were like blown away (laughs) the tents were collapsing Uh, we're like making sure like a a monitor almost crushed my bassist pedal board oh no like like literal inches away from 
actually hitting his pedal board. Oh, well, you know, you know, that's the thing. You know, I think all of us experience these interesting hard times like that as musicians. Oh, yeah. Where, you know, I'm very, you know, it's, it'll be so fun to hear other bands and other musicians who, to tell us about something like that, too. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, everyone, every musician's got stories like that where it's just. You know, what can you do when you live in a shoe, man? You lace up and move on. Well, you know what? Um, I'll pitch this to you. It gives you a song to write about. Exactly. There we go. If you guys hear a song about wind, you'll know why. <laughs> you'll know where it came from. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, I'm, I'm so glad, though, because uh, with you um, performing at different avenues, including open mics, um, you know, all these different paid gigs you've done, and even just streaming yourself on social media, um, you know, you've really gotten yourself out there online. You know, even though you know we have yet to hear your recorded material, um, you've already put a lot of content out there already, and I admire you so much for that. Um, so my hats off to you. Um, when you were streaming for the first time on TikTok, Instagram, uh, uh, what was your like? What was your first experience like when you streamed on there? Like, um, were you a little bit weirded out by the fact that there's people like all over the world watching you, or what are your general thoughts? Yeah, I so I started actively live streaming, I don't know, not that long ago, maybe like six months ago. Right on. And I hated it at really? first. I despised it. You looked like you were having a blast when I first yeah, saw you stream. The first few times, I was like so weirded out. I was so discouraged because yeah. there'd be like two people watching. Oh, okay. Um, because, you know, you have to get on the algorithm. Of course. Um, which yeah. is a whole other conversation. Yeah. Uh. But I hated it. And then I'd get like some, you know, trolls or whatever. Not too, too many. I've been very, very blessed. But, you know, the occasional troll and I'd be like. Oh, trust me. I I know what that's like. Yeah. 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 People are (laughs) mean on the Internet. Um, But since then, you know, I've really come to love it. I look forward to it. I have built a very, uh, it's very small, um, but very mighty, wonderful, incredible community on there. And. Uh, they're very supportive of what I'm doing, and you know that's all you can ask for. That's amazing, and of course, um, the stream that you did early, earlier this afternoon uh, mm-hmm. on this uh, day, which is uh, June fourth, uh, two thousand twenty-four, uh, you got tons of people sharing your live stream. Yeah, that was crazy. See, I said they're small. There's not that many. I think the majority of the time we had very few people on there, but they, man, they are just so supportive, and and they makes me smile. I, they're so yeah. cool, and it just it feels like bigger than like myself, you know, it feels like we're, we're really building towards a community that, um, can, you know, do something outside of just the music itself, which is, that's the dream, right? Well, the one thing you did, um, uh, so well with that is that you have this really awesome, uh, bubbly personality that people really appreciate (laughs) about you. Um, but not only that, you create such a really fun community out of it too. Like, you know, I remember that one stream when, um, you were writing all our names on on the wall, and yeah. so and I'm just like, oh, there's there's my name over there. You know, when I first <laughs> saw that, you wrote my name. I'm just like, oh, that's so cool, right? And everyone else appreciated that, and I think that's something that, you know, for for us as as viewers, we should not take that for granted because just the fact that you know someone like yourself has made the effort to, you know, make our day feel so special. Uh, what, what was the the best compliment that you've ever received uh, during streaming? Oh, during streaming? Yeah, oh something my gosh. that you can remember to t- on the top of your head. Um. Oh my gosh. I oh, the, it's really hard to think of one on the spot. It was really fun. I remember one time being at home. Uh, I was working from home one day, and I was just listening to the 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 chatter because you know I I don't hear them. I hear her talking to them. Yeah. And. The community and the vibe that was being created, yeah, I thought this is a whole new extension, a whole new way of enjoying music, as important as a concert. You know how you're saying concerts are getting so expensive, yeah, but it was interactive, yeah, and exactly. it was so much fun seeing the back and forth. And she's reading, hey, so and so from Quebec, oh, hey, look at we got someone joining from Sweden. How are you doing? And and just listening <laughs> to the joy that was like uh, mutually shared, it was the first time that I re- really could see the value of it and and see That's it right. as an extension of a concert for those who might not be able to afford to actually go and 
and and see something live. Yeah. But it's interactive. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we and we all know uh, the harsh fact. Unfortunately, a tour can get very expensive. Yes. Right. Um, and things are just getting in general getting more expensive since you know, the last few years now lately. But um, I think what you've created uh, when you stream yourself performing online is like now you're giving that opportunity for the whole world to see you, and you don't have to worry about going on tour. You know, trying to get a van or or you know get a plane ticket to fly over to the other side of the world or any of that but it's so cool that you know like now like we can just go on our computers or on our phones to uh see your live performance so yeah. and, and so how long an average is, you, is usually your stream because i think from last time i saw you stream you stream for about like maybe like two hours probably two three yeah. hours um i my live streams are typically 90 minutes to two hours right um i feel like 90 minutes is like the sweet spot because yeah. i am like singing and performing the whole time that's right yeah um and it can get quite like tiring on the voice especially right. because usually uh, for live streams yeah. i'll like live stream performing and then i'll have to go and rehearse for right. um outside outside projects that's or, right yeah you know i'm gigging recording con content or you know playing a gig <laughs> uh so like yeah. 90 minutes to two hours is typically my sweet spot and um yeah that's awesome. Um, do you ever get any uh, uh, repetitive requests? Like, have people constantly ask you, do this song, yeah. do that song? Yeah. So, it started off like a couple months ago. Everyone was asking for Love Story by really? Taylor Swift and Stick Season by Noah Khan. Oh. Like, every live, like, I'd get like five requests and I'd end up playing the song like five times. <laughs> and it was so weird, those two. But now, what's happened? Yeah. And I love it. And it is the biggest compliment so this is the biggest compliment okay that i've ever received on live is they've started requesting my original material oh that's amazing and so there are a few songs that i've written one's called pretty boy one's called better than she can yeah and like i swear every single time i go live one's called mr movie star which was available on streaming platforms but i've taken it down to make room for new projects gotcha um um so they've started requesting those songs in particular and I mean, it's just so fun. I mean, like today I played all like better than she can, Pretty Boy, and Mr. Movie Star. I think at least twice each. That's amazing. Which is unbelievable. They know the words too. That's oh, what's the that's crazy great. part. They've com- they comment the words, and like I'm like yeah. reading the comments, and I'm like, holy smokes! Like you're you're commenting the words. Like, you know the words to my songs. Yeah. And that it's just such, it's so cool. And and I do think the algorithm does change because there was sometimes you were getting like 15, didn't you have one time have 15,000 people no. over this course? What was the biggest one you had? Five? Um, I think close to 10,000. I don't 10, think 000. I've ever hit 15,000. Okay, okay. But the but wow. I also, yeah, I had to take a break from live streaming for a bit just because my personal life and my show life and stuff is getting crazy. Yeah. So now we're kind of having to rebuild. But, I, yeah. I, I feel that. Yeah. yeah. I've been I've been in the same boat as you before on that. Too. Yeah, you like get like some great momentum and then just like, yeah. boom, real yeah. life hits and you're like, oh no. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, everyone needs to know about this. Um, for people like you and I who perform and do it also for a living as a source mm-hmm. of income, I mean, we got to eat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Just so you guys know, we got to eat. <laughs> <laughs> as much as we love hanging out with you guys. On yeah. the internet. Yeah, we got yeah. bills. We can't tell the bills to, to screw off. Yeah, unfortunately <laughs> not. Well, well, that leads me to to my next question too, because obviously, you know, like um, not a lot of people know about this, but you know, for us musicians, including us, uh, like Danny and I, who you know, even though we 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 stream constantly online to entertain you guys, you know, uh, a lot of us we have some other obligations too. You know, some, some of us we work uh, nine to fives, or maybe in some cases, you know, like four to 11 or whatever, you know, jobs we may have. How do you manage to balance that, you know, the work life, the music life, and even personal family life? Yeah. So I'm very fortunate that I have really, really supportive parents who let me live at home. Um, Shout out to you, mom. I love you. Please don't kick me out. (laughs) Big shout out to the family. Yeah. And so... um, Just pick up your clothes, please. (laughs) Exactly. <laughs> you guys and, know what to do. Pick up your clothes, <laughs> do the dishes, and vacuum. <laughs> yeah, so because of their support and just letting me live at home and not having to worry um, about rent, um, I'm able to do music full-time for, for now. You know, I used to yeah. work 
Uh, actually, there was one point where I was working two, two or three jobs. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, including music, I was working at two different restaurants. Wow. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, but it is, it does get to be a lot. Yeah. But, uh, for me, it's like working at a restaurant was like ten times worse than my worst day in music. You know, like my best day in the restaurant, like I'd be like standing around like there's so much more I could be doing right now. And, um, yeah. you know, I'll, you know, not, it's, I'm in a very privileged position where my parents do let me live at home. Of course. Yeah. And I'm obviously not opposed to going back and working a normal person job. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's a lot, but I'd rather be insanely busy and have no social life than, um, do anything else. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Um, you say you worked at two different restaurants. Have you ever like gotten like menus mixed up because you know. <laughs> no, because yeah. one was a, a restaurant restaurant and the other one was a brewery. Oh, okay, that, that yeah. That so helps. yeah, <laughs> Can you yeah. imagine like you work at a similar like two similar restaurants. And oh all my you gosh, got the two mixed up. <laughs> I can't imagine that. No, no, that would mess me up. Uh, um, but no, I luckily there was nothing like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like you know. Oh, you know, have you tried the you know Bobby's Burgers, uh, sir? This is a <laughs> this is a, this is Restaurant X. <laughs> oh, oh man. Um, so let's talk about the local scene. Um, is is there any local artist that you're you're currently uh, seeing uh, live uh, constantly, and you're just like, man, these guys should be recognized way more than they are right now. This is a rabbit hole. I I'm gonna name drop so hard right now. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, name any like three, five, whatever. You can hear like all my friends right now. Yeah. Um. Okay. He already knows that I'm obsessed. With, I'm a huge fan of him and his band, Nick Stone. Okay. Yes. We were yeah, talking we, about this we, earlier. We, we 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 both met Nick already. Yeah. Yeah. Big fan. Um. He has this song called Cinnamon. Yeah. Uh. He and Colton Legree Legree. I always mispronounce his name. Sorry, Colton. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Colton. <laughs> Sorry about that. They have the song called Cinnamon together. Yeah. That song, they put drugs in it. It is so addictive. <laughs> I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> um, I'm also a huge fan of grade school. Black Pontiac. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, Bo Henrik. He has a song called yeah. Ride the Vibe. Awesome. I just saw it performed live for the first time on Saturday. That's amazing. Unbelievable. Nice. Anyways, I could go on. Net is another one. Okay. She is the coolest. Yeah. She's like a producer. She's a songwriter. She's a performing musician. Yeah. She is what I aspire to be. She is really, really cool. Um, and I could go on for hours, but I will not. But yeah. those shout out to all you yeah. beautiful people. <laughs> I'm going to uh, uh, give a special shout out to, of course, to Great School and Black Pontiac because they're all yes. friends of mine. Because um, oh uh, the first time I've met Great School, uh, we did a show together. I think I talked to you about this like right. um, a months back. But um, the, the thing I love about Great School is just that, you know, they're just so, they're just a bunch of, they're, they're a bunch of happy dudes. <laughs> and And I just love the fact that, you know, people are coming to their shows too, you know, just because they're just really happy go lucky dudes that I, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm so proud to, to, to call them as, as friends as well, you know. Um, but yeah, big shout out to those guys, especially. Um, shout out, yeah. Yeah. Drew Story. Oh, Drew Story. How could I forget oh, Drew, Drew Story? Yes, I know him too. I love yes. Drew Story. Drew, yes. Yeah. yeah. Drew, Drew, Drew's coming up too. Oh my gosh. We, we're big fans of Drew Story in our household. Yeah, and I, because I, I remember um, when I was talking to Drew, he was uh, staying in Nelson because uh, yeah. he's he's in school. Yes, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, but I think he's on a break right now, so yeah. he's probably back in Vancouver, if I'm not mistaken. He's back for the summer. Uh, we have actually some exciting. We have some some. We're working on some things. Oh, that's good. To be announced. We have a couple of shows together. Yeah. Now his yeah. musical taste is quite out there. I'm just like, <laughs> oh, he's he's not well, he's not the typical kid who's into you know Drake or you know yeah um, or like uh, pop punk music or anything like that. He's his taste is like in a different different realm basically. He's a huge Rex Orange County fan. Yes, he is. Yeah, yes. and you can definitely tell. I was playing one of Rex Orange County songs in the car. Yeah. And my mom looks at me and she goes, is this Drew's story? And when I tell you, I texted him that. Yeah. Um, I'm so, I'm exposing you, Drew. Sorry. Sorry, Drew. <laughs> we love I, you, though. <laughs> I texted him that. I was like, yo, my mom just thought your song or that Rex Orange County was you. And he responds back in like a nanosecond. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, that's the best compliment ever. But yeah. 
Uh, no, he's got he's got a good taste in music. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're going to wrap up the session by finishing off with this one final question for you. If there is anybody, any big rock star uh, right now who you want to collab with, who would it oh be? Um, I would say name your top two. Top two? Oh, no. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, um, can I say three? Actually, you know what? I'll give, I'm going to give you five. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 five. I'm in a generous mood today. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like you're already collaborating with Taylor Swift when you keep writing, rewriting her songs. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of Taylor Swift rewrites I've done. So obviously Taylor Swift. I mean, yeah. who wouldn't want to work so, with her? So, so cause it's funny because you said you're, yeah, we, I remember when you were doing the rewrites of her songs, right? It's yeah. almost like you're like Taylor Swift's Weird Al counterpart in a way. <laughs> You're like you're like the weird owl for Taylor Swift music. That's yeah, that's kind of what it felt like. Um, but I love doing it. Yeah. I love it was like combining two of my favorite things, like Taylor Swift and songwriting. I was like, yeah. heck yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um yeah, so Taylor Swift, yeah, Benson Boone. Yes. I have been telling people about him since he dropped his first single. I'm just yeah. putting it out there. Noah Khan, obviously. Yeah. I would love to work with the Lumineers. Really? Oh yes. yeah. Oh yes. That's oh right. yeah. Big, big fans of the Lumineers. If you're and listening, Lumineers, please consider hit her. Up. Hit me up, please. <laughs> <laughs> I beg of you. <laughs> um, and ooh, oh my gosh, this is hard. There are so many incredible musicians. You know, I'm just gonna say Zach Bryan. Right on. I would love. Oh, wait, no. Can I rescind that? Yeah, can I take it back? Sure, I sure. wanna. Okay, maybe this wouldn't be a great collaboration because we have very different styles. Yeah. But I would love to songwrite with Peter McPoland. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He has such a unique st- voice in songwriting, uh, in style. That yeah. I was like, I would love to just figure out how yeah. he writes his songs. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. yeah. So that's, okay. So, we, so let's recap. So Taylor <laughs> yeah. Swift. Obviously. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Benson Boone. Benson Boone. Yeah. Lumineers. Um, Noah Kahn. Was it Noah, Noah Kahn? Kahn? Did I say Noah yeah. Kahn? I yeah, was thinking Noah Kahn. Noah Kahn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Peter McPoland. I'm surprised that Brian wasn't above Noah Kahn. Well, they're kind of like, I don't know. They're very, I don't know. I'm, I love them all. Like right. I said, I could talk about my favorite musicians yes. locally, globally. And she does. I do. <laughs> yeah. I'm a yapper. Sorry. No, I'm, I'm really, well, that's why we're here. <laughs> and yeah. she sings and doesn't stop. <laughs> yeah. And and that's the, the kind of energy I always admire when it comes to uh, seeing great performers like you, getting yourself out there. And like I said, you know, do, seeing you doing a wide variety of songs, especially like all the ones, um, you know, even the ones I've, I remember I've played before too, you know, I think that's really awesome. Um, but honestly, I, I I know the songs you're going to release online uh, later this year in 2024. It, <laughs> it's going to be amazing and uh, can't wait to, to see you live with a band. It, I think it's going to be awesome. Uh, you so I think you're on the right path. Um, it, so before we uh, wrap up, um, both Instamom and Danny, do you guys have anything to say to the people out there? Um, Where to find you? Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, if you want to know more about me, follow my journey. Uh, see Instamom do Instagram stories and Snapchat stories. I just got Snapchat. Oh, wow. That's a that's an app I haven't heard in a little while. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Apparently, it's a, a great, you know, other social media platform for promoting yourself. So, anyways, um, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat uh, at DannyBlack.Music, except Snapchat is just Danny Black Music. Gotcha. Because someone had taken the dot. What? Anyways, I know the audacity. Um, and subscribe to my newsletter through the link in my bio in uh, Instagram and TikTok, Danny Black Dot Music. Awesome. What about you, Instagram? Any any final words to to the people out there? No, just if you get a chance to come and see Danny live, that would be awesome. And so glad that uh, you've got this uh, forum as well, Eddie. And uh, good luck to you as well in all your music endeavors. And and thank you for bringing the community together in the in this forum oh thank you so much thank you thank you so much for having us this has been so so much fun anytime well thank you guys so much so again guys again please follow uh danny uh black dot music on social media platforms danny black music on in, on um, snapchat and follow insta mom too on instagram uh she is one of the coolest moms that you'll ever meet and uh, she is the social media queen <laughs> <laughs> awesome well thank you guys so much for tuning in and we will see you next time 
We hope you enjoyed this episode of The Eddie Lamb Show, a podcast dedicated to interviewing musicians and online content creators of every kind. If you would like to be a guest on the program, feel free to send me an email at eddielammusic at gmail.com. That's E-D-D-I-E-L-A-M music at gmail.com. Don't forget to check out my website at eddielammusic.ca. That's E-D-D-I-E-L-A-M music.ca. You can also follow me on social media. Username is Eddie Lamb Music. That's E-D-D-I-E-L-A-M music on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning into our program. In the meantime, stay in touch, stay safe, and as always, stay awesome.